When I say 941,000 um, and 216,000 are in the United States, are those useful numbers at all? I say them and it's like that. I think they're just, what are they? They're just people that have tested positive. But if we're off by a factor of 10, is it really relevant to even talk about it? Well, look, they're tragic measures of the morbidity and mortality associated with this disease. I think what we should be looking at is the rate of new infections and whether or not the rate of new infections and the growth is going up or down. You see some slowing in the curves with respect to New York and a steeping of the curves with respect to Louisiana and Florida in terms of how long it's taking to double the number of new cases. And that's what I'd be focused on right now. Where is it accelerating? Where are new infections accelerating? Where are they decelerating? They seem to be decelerating in New York. Now, we don't have a lot of days of data right now, but there is some positive signals. There are some positive signals in Massachusetts as well. So some of the states that were early to take mitigation steps are showing positive signs. Certainly San Francisco and Seattle also are indicating that they're moving in the right direction. That all sounds uh, pr pretty positive. And, and then I was going to talk about Italy. I, I seeing at least that, you know, looking at bar charts, it's, there have been three or four, even five days that seem to indicate maybe it's, there's some improvement uh, in Italy. But then I, I just hearken back to, to China, what some of the, the, uh, some of the uh, conjecture that has come out recently, how many people left Wuhan, how many people total that they talked about, that they're starting to, to say, yeah, maybe asymptomatic cases were higher. I, I don't know whether we can count on the uh, what happened in China with, with the numbers, although people are, are back to work. But if things are more positive in Italy, that's something to be uh, at least heartened about. That's right. I mean, Italy looks like they're, they're peaking. Um, you know, the top isn't a straight line up and a straight line down. It's going to bounce around at the top for a number of days and maybe a week or more. Italy does seem to be at a plateau right now. Spain may be decelerating as well. So, you know, the epidemic will run its course in those countries and it's going to run its course here. I think the concern in the United States, though, is it's such a big country and we are, we're going to have so many hotspots, so many epicenters that they're not going to all be going up and down at the same time. So you can't look at the national trend. What you need to do is look at it regionally because a national trend can be showing a decline because New York is coming down its epidemic curve, but other places could be rising steeply up there. So you really need to look at the southwest, the Pacific Northwest, the northeast. Um, you know, the southeast. And the southeast right now looks like the most concerning region, if I was to pick one. Florida, Georgia, you know, parts of Alabama, Louisiana, if you consider that southeast, but the south, the Sun Belt, those, those states look to be very concerning in terms of the growth in new cases. Doctor, are, are these, some of these small trials of these uh, drugs that we're seeing, hydroxychloroquine, I, I don't know whether to put any faith in them, but you see some positive stuff. Once again, it's on Twitter or the Internet, so I, I take it with a, a, a big grain of salt. But, you know, I've seen things saying 71 patients, uh, zero intubated uh, after taking the drug. Do you, do you see anything that makes you think that the evidence is starting to, uh, to, to look like it helps with a SARS-type respiratory um, virus, the hydroxychloroquine? Or are you right. still not willing to say that? Well, look, I, we're going to need a drug here. We're not going to have a vaccine for a number of years. We really need to figure that a vaccine might be two years away. And this virus isn't going away. This virus is going to continue to bounce around the world. And it's going to change our lives until we have a therapeutic that can vanquish it or really take the fear away from um, this virus spreading in the background. A drug can do that. And we can have a drug in the near term. Even if we can't have a vaccine, we can have a therapeutic by the summer or the fall. I think it's going to require global regulators to take on a much different role what you're seeing is the NIH partnering with companies to try to develop a vaccine. NIAID and Tony Fauci's group at the NIH are partnering with Moderna. They've made a bet on a vaccine, and they're working to accelerate the development of that product. We really need to do the same thing with therapeutics as well, and we're not doing that right now. We need to partner with the companies that have the most promising therapies and try to drive them through development and really have a sense of urgency around this. In the same way like the oncology division at FDA has had a sense of urgency about trying to bring promising cancer drugs for unmet medical needs through development more quickly, coming up with different regulatory approaches to try to do that. We need to do the same thing here because we need a therapeutic by the fall. If we don't have it, this virus is going to come back in the fall and it's going to continue to shut down parts of our lives. This is going to circulate in the background. The consumer is not going to bounce back. People are going to be afraid to go out. 
and we're going to continue to see people succumb to this virus. But there's no so reason we can't have the technology that, a, that, that would dramatically change was it. Was that a yes, no? Was that a yes, no, or a maybe about hydroxychloroquine? On hydroxychloroquine, I, I, that's well, a long answer, but. I, yeah, well, look, on hydroxychloroquine specifically, there's some small studies right now. They look interesting. They certainly um, show some promise. That there's a 60-patient study that you're probably pointing to that was out of China. Look, these are early studies. I wouldn't, I wouldn't place all my bets with hydroxychloroquine. There's a rich pipeline. There's a lot of drugs that show activity right now. That hydroxychloroquine may work, okay. but I will say that it's being used pretty widely in Italy and the U.S., and if it was having a very robust treatment effect, we probably would have seen it. So if it's positive... And it's having an effect. Oh, okay. It's not an effect that's very apparent.